Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and today we're doing another episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. We're talking about Shaquille O'Neal, Chinese Democracy and Guns N' Roses. So of all the articles that were written over the years that Chinese Democracy was being worked on, there was a story back in 1997 that Shaquille O'Neal was in the recording studio next to Guns N' Roses. He heard the band jamming, they invited him in and he freestyle rapped over one of the songs they were working on course it never made the record and some people wondered whether this was a legit story or whether it was not true so here's what the members of Guns N' Roses had to say about the story. So talking about various interviews done over the years with members of Guns N' Roses you know the the recording sessions with Shaq have actually been brought up a number of times so Spin Magazine is I think one of the first places that actually brought up the story about Shaq working with Guns N' Roses. According to the July issue of Spin from 1999, at one point in April 1997, Shaquille O'Neal took a break from his own recording session in the same building and rapped over some Guns music. So Shaq said, I saw Guns N' Roses listed on the bulletin board in the lobby of the studio, so I stuck my head in to check it out, says Shaq. They asked me to join, so I started freestyling over their track. It was the first time I ever performed with a rock group, and it felt good. So there was also um, an interview done with Dizzy Reed who talked about this experience. He said, I jammed with Shaq. At one point, I was down at the rehearsal place in Santa Monica writing songs with Paul Tobias. My friend Sid Riggs was playing drums, just drumming for us. We were basically writing and recording stuff, constantly just basically waiting for everyone else to basically show up. And there were these satellite recording studios around the soundstage, and Shaq was doing a Taco Bell commercial. So he heard that we were next door, so he wanted to come say hi. He starts playing this polysynth sound, this riff off the, my keyboard, and it was really cool. And so I look over at the drummer and motion for him to get a hip-hop beat going, and Sid goes into his groove, and Shaq started vibing, and Paul started playing guitar. And Shaq looks over at me, and this magic just happened. He says, take over. And so I watched what he's playing, and I sat down and started playing it, and he's got this groove going. He and his buddies grabbed the mic and started doing this rap, and our engineer, Tommy, was rolling tape the entire time. So that's probably where that story comes from. So that's from a 2000 six interview that Dizzy did. Now Axel was doing a bunch of different fan Q&As in 2008 after Chinese Democracy came out and one of the fans asked him if there's truly a rap song with Shaq on it that you recorded. This is one of the many rumors flying around since the album's conception I think we all want to know. To which Axel responded, in my opinion that was just cheap shots from the media jerk-offs knowing that Shaq wasn't the most popular or respected rapper publicly. I've never met the man. He goofed around with Paul Tobias and Dizzy Reed and it went from there. This isn't the only Shaq story that's related to Guns N' Roses, so TMZ Sports ran into Matt Sorum a couple of years ago, and you can watch the entire interview uh, at the link below, and he talked about how he was once partying with uh, Charlie Sheen, and he met Shaq at the forum when Shaq was still playing for the Orlando Magic, this was probably during the mid-90s, and he basically said Shaquille O'Neal rejected uh, Matt Sorum's offer to party with them, so Shaquille O'Neal's no idiot and smartly turned down an epic invitation to party with Charlie Sheen and rock legend Matt Sorum in the 90s because he thought he would die. It's a pretty hilarious story. Sorum, who drummed for Guns N' Roses VR and more, says it all went uh, down back when Shaq was still playing for the Orlando Magic. Sorum says that Shaq couldn't have been nicer when they asked Shaq to party with him, but explained why he had to respectfully decline. I really felt he was concerned he wouldn't return from the excursion unscathed. Even Sorum admits it was probably the right move. Now, there was also an interview with Axl Rose at the 2001 NBA Finals when the Los Angeles Lakers were playing the Philadelphia 76ers. Of course, the Los Angeles Lakers won that series in five games, and Axl was interviewed uh, right after, I think it was game one, and he talked about being a fan of both um, the Philadelphia 76ers and the Lakers. With Axel residing in California, I think it's safe to assume that he's a Lakers fan. And I've seen Slash at a bunch of Lakers games as well. So that's something they probably have in common and talk about maybe on the reunion tour. So here's the interview. Do you know who this is? The lead singer of Guns N' Roses, Axel Rose. Wow, what'd you think? I thought it was amazing. It's a lot of fun. This is my first basketball game in person. So. This is your first game ever in person? Yeah, to go see it live, yes. Well, now, coming in, were you rooting for the Lakers or the Sixers? The Lakers are, are my favorite team, but I'm, I'm a huge Iverson fan, so I'm rooting for the underdog because the Lakers are like the give. So it's like, I went either way. I went either way in this one. Now, Axel, you sat out there, you experienced the Philadelphia fans. But I want the, I, I want the season to go longer. You should extend the series. i got to tell you something very seriously. For a 10-game series? No, I know it's your first basketball game ever, and I know it's very exciting, but when it's all said and done, the season will have been long enough. It's a very long season. No, no, but let me ask you, what do you think of these fans? I mean, people say it's a tough crowd, it's a rough crowd. What do you think? 
I, I thought it was all right. I thought it, I thought it was pretty mellow. I, I didn't. I thought it was nice. Well, we think you're very nice for coming well, over. I'm, I'm rooting for both teams. You know, when when it's exciting, it's exciting. You know, I mean, you can't take anything away from from Shaq or Kobe. You just can't. Axel, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate your time. Glad you enjoyed your first game. Thank you very much. So that does it for this episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. As always, guys, hit the like button and the subscribe button if you want to see more videos just like this. And please be sure to share the video as well. You guys can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And you can also go support my channel on Patreon. The links to all that good stuff is down below in the description box. Take care.